All right, so we are here at the profile page, and we have uh, successfully uh, retrieved that particular user uh, from the from the server. We like to now be able to update that user, right? And uh, and we already have something implemented uh, that does that, but it's implemented in the um, it's implemented locally, right? In the user service clients, right? We need to move this uh, this uh, code uh, to the server, and eventually. Uh, update a database at some point, right? Um, so let's let's see how we could do this uh, on the server side, right? Uh, so you're fo following the um, the RESTful uh, syntax on um, on these on these URLs. These URLs uh, are meant to uh, identify a particular uh, entity instance, right, or a particular entity class that we are we are manipulating. In this case, we're notice that they all end in user, right? Fine. Find find user by ID or find user uh, by credentials. They all end in user. See that, right? And uh, and the reason is that that is the entity that we are manipulating, right? The the uh, we're manipulating users. Um, and uh, in these two cases, we are reading information about users, right? We are so so that's why we're using a get, right? We're using we're, uh, for for read only purposes. Uh, following the RESTful uh, APIs, uh, the the con uh, the convention is that for update we use uh, the put HTTP method as opposed to the get, right? So the, the convention is that if you're reading, right, for read-only purposes, you do get. Uh, for if you're creating new uh, elements, you use post. If you're updating uh, things, that, uh, entities that already exist, you use, we use put, right? And if you're removing, you use delete, okay? Uh, so let's, um, so the uh, following that idea, uh, it, it would work something like this. We would, um, uh, generate an HTTP, an HTTP dot put, right? And the URL will be something like API slash uh, morning slash user, uh, followed by the ID of the user that we are uh, updating, right? It's this particular user uh, as part of the path parameter. Uh, and then pass as argument uh, the uh, user, new user object that, in that has the new data. Right, that we want to update for that user, right? Uh, so, so if we um, if we uh, if we refresh, right, we try to update uh, the uh, the network. Uh, let's see. Oh, do we not? Oh, do we have save update? Let's see, save update. Okay, there it is. So notice that it went out to the server, right? There it is. API morning user two three four. It's a put. See, it's a put. Notice that the object that went out there's the this is the, uh, the 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 payload right of the data that went out to the server that was sent from the client over to the server, which the server needs to retrieve uh, from uh, from uh, th this is this is encoded inside of the body of the HTTP request that goes out to the server. The server needs to retrieve this from the from the body and then make the updates. Right, we'll need to update the first name right and any other uh, modifications that we we make. Make sense? Right, but notice that right now it's complaining saying. There's no such URL mapped to this on the server, right? Uh, so let's um, let's implement that on the server side. So let's go out to the server, and uh, so and let's create that put. It'll look something like this. So app dot put, right? It's listening for the same exact URL. Notice that it, it, this URL looks exactly the same as this one. See that? The the way that the server tells them apart is that one is a get, right, and another one is a put, right? So so this one will be mapped to a function called update uh, user, right? That is going to be very very similar to find user by ID. So let me let me copy that, uh, and it's going to uh, the name is going to be update user. Right? It's going to retrieve the user from the user ID from the parameters, right? Um, and um, it's going to look for the user, and once it finds it, once it finds a user, it needs to update that user. Yes. Update the first name, last name, whatever password. I guess not username. Uh, so where is the the actual user information? We sent it over to the server as a as the payload, right? In, in, embedded inside of the body of the HTTP request that went out to the server. So the server needs to retrieve it from the request that came from the client, right? So we're going to say the var new user. So the new user object. Uh, is inside of the uh, body in the request, so request.body. So retrieve the payload data that, that is embedded inside of the body of the HTTP request, right? 
and that is the the uh, the JSON object. And what are we going to do? We're going to update our uh, user. So user sub u. We're going to update the first name. First name. We're going to update it with the new user. The new user uh, dot first name. Right. And uh, same thing with uh, last name. Right. Let's only do these two. These two. Okay. Uh, and uh, if everything went okay, if everything went okay, we're going to uh, send back uh, a status saying send status that is 200. No, everything was dandy. It was good. All right. Um, if instead uh, we didn't find the user, we're going to send back a 404. Make sense? All right. Just a status. We don't need to send back any data because the data already is in the client. Right, the, the, the client already has the object, so right? we don't need to send it back again, right? So let's refresh this. Let's refresh and uh, let's restart this. Um, and let's see, let's clear this and let's change this to the last name. I'm going to say update. Uh, let's see what happened here. The, uh, we get back a 200, okay. We did send that information. Let's refresh this page. And something went wrong. Wait, what? What happened here? Um, let me see. Did it find the user? Wait, let me do a console a log user ID. And then let's see if it found the user. Console log user. And uh, let's see, did it find new user okay let's restart yes uh, yes we could the thing is I have an older version of WebStorm and it's not compatible with the node.js version I recently updated node.js it's not compatible with WebStorm so I can't put breakpoints <laughs> yes I pass. I sent it over as yes is embedded in the body of the HTTP request, right? So the server retrieves the data that comes back comes from the client, right? From the from the body, right? We saw that it was sent as a payload, right? Yep. I am. That's that's why params, right? Right. If it were in the query, like like question mark um, ampersand, then I would use query. These over here. Okay. Uh, so all right. So this Bob, this Bob. Let's change that and let's see what happens on the server when I s send the updates. Okay. Looks like looks like this is all right. So I found it found the. It looks like I got the UID, the user ID. Okay, there it is. Uh, looks like it found the user. There it is. There it is. Uh, and this, there's console. Okay, where, what's this over here? Wait, what? So we have this console. User ID. There it is. Two, three, four. Uh, it's fine. It's looking for the user for. Oh, okay. We don't want to display this so many times, right? Sorry. Uh, so if it finds a user, I want to print the user and then new user, right? If it finds a user, there's a user it found. So something like console log found user, and this is new user, right? New user. Let me, let me refresh. Let's refresh. Update. Oh, so the new user, notice that it's not coming, right? It's not coming from the uh, client. Something is wrong, right? So we are sending it because we, we, we did check the, uh, we inspected it, right? And we saw that in the network, we are sending it, right? Yeah, I was having, I was having this uh, problem, same problem. Um, notice that it's being sent, 
and uh, notice that okay so notice the um, that is sending it um, the the request is, send, is saying that it's website JSON right it's not the format it's not the <laughs> format that the server is expecting the server is expecting it to be application slash JSON right and but it's sending it instead in the for, in, a, in a different format website slash JSON okay so our body parser doesn't know how to parse website slash JSON right so we need to override on how the uh, client uh, formats the puts and the posts that sends over to the uh, uh, to to the server. All right. So let's do that. Let's uh, let's fix that. Uh, I believe I had fixed it for the other section um, right here. Right. So in the config, I believe I added this in Piazza, um, and so so you can you can configure. Right when uh, and for for Angular, we can say that hey, you know that HTTP service you're using to post and put and gets and all that, right? You can configure and and say hey, when you conf when you send a post or when you send a put, right, uh, to use the following content type, right? As, as in the header, right? In the headers, you can you can say hey, for the content type header, which is right now, notice that the content type, see that? Oh, sorry, right here, content type. The content type in the header says that it's website slash JSON, and the server says, "I don't, I don't know how to parse website slash JSON, right? Uh, it's, an, it's a correct. The data is in the correct format, right? Notice that it's the correct format. It is the correct string, right? Uh, but the server is, is uh, refusing to parse it because it sees the content type of a content that it does not recognize, right? So we're going to override how th this content type, right? Uh, we could do it." And we could do it in the service. We could do it on the in the service uh, here, right here. We could say dollar sign HTTP dot header content type is equal to blah 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 blah. But I'm going to do it for the for the entire application, right? Because this, we're going to run into the same issue when we do websites, pages, and widgets, right? Uh, so I'm going to do it for for for. I'm going to say always when you use post and put, always use content type JSON. All right. Okay. So I'm going to copy it from the from right here, and I'm going to put it in the conf our config. Where's config? Right here, config. And I'm going to put it right here in the configuration. So right when it's when it, when the application, the Angular application starts, right, we're going to configure uh, that right here. So I'm going to refresh. I'm going to restart the server because apparently I'm re I'm removing these things from the server. Let me restart the server. Uh, so let's look for uh, Bob. There it is, and let's uh, let's clear this, and let's do an update. Uh, let's refresh. There it is. So it did work, right? It did work. Right, the uh, notice that the update is working. Even when I refresh the page, right, it's fetching the right uh, uh, object from the uh, from the uh, from the server. Everybody okay? All right. Yes. Yeah, I, I might have an older version uh, of Angular. You might have a, a newer one. Um, I think you're using one five, right? I think I, th I think I might have. I'm, I might be using an old uh, an older one. Uh, yeah, you you have to make sure that the body parser, the Angular version, and the Node.js version, they're all you know they're all compatible versions, right? Um, all right, so so that's working. Uh, so update is working, right? Um, let's see. We we um, looks like we when we update it and we we update it. Notice it says unable to update users. So there's something wrong with that logic in the update. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, the profile controller. The profile controller when it updates. Here's the updates, right? Oh, okay. So here it is. What's happening is that the update is still using the synchronous version of this, right? It's getting a promise, right? Uh, so, so it's misinterpreting this this object, right? This is no longer a user, right? Instead, this is a promise, and we're going to register a success here. Success, which is going to uh, receive a response. This response is really what it's it's really um, a two hundred or a four four, right? Uh, if it's if it's if it's a two hundred, uh, we're just going to ignore it. We don't. There's nothing for us to do, right? Oh, or maybe we could say sorry. We could we could say something like uh, successful, right? Yeah, successfully updated. Or if we get an error, 
right? We can say uh, we can say unable to update. So we can throw this away now. Okay, so let's let's refresh that. So if we change this and we say update, uh, oops, what's going on? Console is success. Uh, service. What's going on? Did I not? Oh, we never returned this. So it's a return. Return. Let's okay, let's uh, refresh that. Let's try it again. Let's go back to Bobby. Let's say update. There it is. A successful update. Make sense? Right? We're here. Controller? Yep. Make sense? All right, so let's uh, stop this.